If society was based on what people's design would be, reflectors would be kept away from much of the population and they would be advising the kings, offering their gifts on the best way to rule or manage the society. My name is Steve Love and I'm a 6'2 reflector. My conscious son is gate 25 and I have been studying and experimenting with human design for about seven or eight years. In human design, they talk a lot about your aura and the reflector is the sampling aura or the Teflon aura. It doesn't matter if it's human design, the people that I'm with, my business, the clients that I work with, it's important for me to sample because that sample is what creates the surprise in life and really helps you feel if you're really living life according to your design. And one of the ways is that you can get stuck or stagnant is when you're not sampling different things. The way that I experience it is I'm highly energetically sensitive to what I can see. And I'm here to be a clear energy source and a reflection of what's real around the people or the environment that I'm around. But I'm not one that just like goes in, lifelong journey, and I'm gonna stay there. I'm gonna tune into the frequencies and then I'm gonna move on to something else. But that doesn't mean that my felt experience in things when it comes to relationships or people, my emotional state isn't necessarily Teflon. On one hand, I can see how the Teflon analogy makes sense, but on the other hand, I can't because we do feel so much that it's not always, that stuff just like if someone's projecting their ickiness or, or their way they see the world or how they operate in the world, that that's not gonna feel very good to someone like me. And it's really important as reflectors because we're, we're so open, we wanna make sure that we're in environments that are gonna be nurturing. And one of the ways you can tell is if a reflector isn't feeling good and they're living with lots of disappointment and they've kind of lost that surprise for life, Oftentimes that could be the environment, the people you're around, the house, the city, and all the different things. When it comes to working as a reflector, there are a particular set of challenges that have to be addressed. And oftentimes it can come through as burnout or not feeling like you have the energy to keep up with how you know, the rest of the world operates in, in other designs, in particular generators and manifesting generators. There's a certain level that I can push through in order to achieve what I want to achieve. And at the same time, it served me until it stopped serving me. I mean, my whole life fell apart. Eight years ago, I had a very significant awakening. I had all of the external things that you know, a lot of us thought that we needed. I was married for 20 years, I had three kids, I had a six-figure corporate job, I had a nice house, I had nice cars, I had all of the things that, you know, I thought that I wanted. One of the things that I also had is I had a pretty extreme drug habit. During the week, I was the good dad that would show up to the soccer games and coach my kids' as teams, and then on the weekends, I was there to party and have fun. I'd work hard and I'd play even harder. I had been suspecting my wife at the time had been having an affairs. There was this point of time where we had been partying for a number of days and I ended up finding evidence that she actually had had an affair. I had been coming down and there were more, no more drugs left and here I was experiencing like the worst pain that I had ever experienced before. The amount of betrayal, the hurt, my nervous system was just being like ripped out of my body. I tried to run away from that and the only way I felt like I could kill that pain was to end my life. And so I, I ran downstairs, I closed the door and I put a gun to my head. This way of living is done and if I have to blow my brains out, that's exactly what I'm gonna do because I'm done. And that's really the first time where I tuned in and I'm like, what am I supposed to do next? Because I'm done living like this. I cannot 
keep living this cycle of, you know, hurting my family, hurting myself. And that's when I heard the message that, Steve, you're here to serve other people. You could call it God, you could call it your higher self, but it was just a voice that was so true and I had no choice but to listen to that voice and that was a voice that I had been suppressing and ignoring for so many years because it was telling me to make hard decisions that I just was ignoring. That's when life really got hard. I was ultimately left to, called to leave my marriage of 20 years and then I was in the court systems for two years fighting for my kids. There's nothing like a training of honoring your truth inside of a system that will put you in jail if you don't do what they say. And I was at a point where I'm done showing up for everyone else and it's time to show up for Steve and what's true for Steve regardless of what anyone says. And so there were time periods where I almost went to jail because I had to operate from a place of alignment and my actions have to align with what that internal voice tells me to do. So I'm super grateful for that because that was like a very high level of training. Ultimately, I started my business to become a coach and then I made it through the two years of the court systems, which was just grueling. And then at that point, I left and I moved to Bali and I went more on the healing path and recovering and getting outside of that system. I literally needed to cut all of those threads on who I thought I was. I had to cut the thread of being a husband. I had to cut the thread of the career. I had to cut the thread of even being a father and what kind of father I was. Because if I was not cutting those threads and I was not living who I was created to be, then how can I be a husband, a father of service in my work? That's when things started to kind of change around human design and, you know, in Bali, a lot of the expats there are you know, on that path and they're, it's kind of part of the, the tribal language on, you know, like what's your design. And that is where the deep dive started and diving into my gates and the, the lines also specifically, I started really just exploring my chart. The biggest piece of this is doing the work to decondition yourself. I mean, it's essentially about awakening to who you were really created to be. It gives you a blueprint or a map to start exploring different aspects of yourself that may be overexpressed or underexpressed and really digging into like your true nature. Our system and society isn't really set up to be like, hey, you're a reflector, you're a projector, here are your natural gifts and let's organize society in that way. And so it tends to be a lot more like, hey, how do I fit in this world where everyone kind of is expected or this is how things work, but over here it may not necessarily work for you and the society or the people you're around may not really value your gifts. And so there can be a little bit of like a tug of war and finding a way that's actually going to align with you. And I can speak from my experience, like I've done over a thousand strategy sessions, sold seven figures of coaching. And generally speaking, like that's not something that a reflector is going to do because it's kind of like too much working, too much doing, and it kind of turned into a machine that was hard for me to run. And at the same time, there were so many lessons and gifts that I got from that experience that I'm able to share with other people. And so again, it just really takes attunement and knowing where you're at, and at the end of the day, looking at like what you wanna create and what you're willing to do to get there, and that's gonna be really different from everyone and it's gonna take some experimentation. Now, one of the things they suggest is that reflectors wait 28 days. I can almost feel where the moon is at by, you know, my dreams will change. I'll feel more social or I'll feel more internal. And for me, there was never like this conscious thing of like, oh my gosh, I have this decision. I need to wait 28 days. Just my felt sense is that like, hey, this is a decision that I'm not getting an answer on. And so I just, I just call it, I'm just gonna put it on the back burner. 
it's just an experiment. Try it on, if it works, you tend to make better decisions, that's great. And I think it, it takes, you know, experimentation, but just knowing and understanding how some of these systems can play out in your own life, so that way you can implement them to live a more aligned life. I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to my story and letting me share. Hopefully it helps you on your path in human design. And I especially wanna thank Amanda for having me on and letting me share my story. Thank you so much and I appreciate you.